we have a proper, proper title race on our hands. Proper title race, genuinely. What a game of football. What a game of football. Two really, really good halves, both from Arsenal and, of course, Liverpool. Genuinely, I've, I'm not going to lie. I thought, on the balance, I'm going to be brutally honest. I think a draw probably is a fair result. Arsenal really good in the first half. Liverpool probably could have created more chances in the second half. But we have got one hell of a title race on our hands. Two world-class sides. Two really, really good teams. Arsenal, of course, not fully strength. But from a Liverpool perspective, when the, when the line is weak, you have to go into the lines then and capitalise. And they didn't beat Arsenal. And at one point, for 35 minutes, they weren't without their centre-back pairing or their captain. Um, make sure you go down, drop a like on the video if you haven't already. I, I, I thought that was a, a really, really good game of football to watch. Really, really good game. It had all, everything you could possibly want. Make sure you go down and drop a like. When I looked at the lineup, I thought, hmm, Arteta's definitely done something here. Covering up that Saka's not available, covering up that Timber's not available. And then he goes out there and, and kind of surprises everyone um, and, and plays both of them. You know, Thomas Party in at right back, Timber in at left back. And even the corners of the guy in the 20-odd in the minutes to go and he brings on Lewis Skelly, like it's genuinely, it's absolute, it, it's, it's ridiculous Cajonas from him. That was a the team they played. A back four of Ben White, Tim Bart, and the two centre-backs were Gabriel and Ben White. And I thought Ben White had a really good game. Four in the midfield, two centre-mids of Mikel Marino and Declan Rice, and then Saka and Martinelli. And in a lot of the big games, you are going to see this 4-4-2 um, really uh, in fruition. Now, Liverpool went with um, the Thor 2-3-1. Wasn't impressed with McAllister today. Don't think it was his best game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the back four picks itself. Luis Diaz, Curtis Jones. Wasn't impressed with Diaz or Jones. And I think when Arnie Schlott made those changes, it was kind of like for like. He brought on uh, Gakpo for Diaz. He brought on Sober's life for for Jones, um, and he took off McAllister. I think that was for Endo. Um, but a really, really good game of football. You know, Bakayo Saka. This guy is a one, one hell of a player, world class. Now, like, there's no no ifs, no buts, no maybes. The guy delivers when it comes down to the big, big games. He really, really does. Uh, ben White obviously got the assist. Uh, Arsenal took advantage. Um, inch per inch perfect pass over um Saka times a run you know takes the ball in his stride and scores and then when you talk about Liverpool what do they have in the tank they responded you know within 10 minutes you're one nil down away at the Emirates a huge title game so early on in the season um and they, and they've gone out there and they've they, they, they've they, they've they've bounced back so so quick so, so quick. Um, and fair play to Liverpool. Corner comes in. Diaz beats Havertz to the flick on. And there is your captain. There's your, your leader. And the leaders turned up for Liverpool today. Both Mohamed Salah and Virgil van Dijk. And then I'm like, right. 1-1. One, one. And it, it was almost like a game of chess. Arsenal win a free kick. 35 yards out, Declan Rice with an inch-perfect ball. And Mikel Marino is there to announce himself to the Arsenal fan base with an absolute bullet header, maybe six yards out. And half-time, I thought, right, Arsenal have to stop Trent Alexander-Arnold getting on the ball. He is the creative source. It's essentially Kevin De Bruyne at right-back. The guy, when it comes down to creating chances, is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best chance creator in, in, in Europe. Genuinely. The, the guy is absolutely unbelievable. And I thought, right, first 20 minutes, Arsenal have got to keep it tight. You naturally think Liverpool are going to come out that come out against them and really, you know, show some 
show some passion, fight for the badge. And then Arsenal lose Gabriel Magalhaes. And I thought that was a huge turning point in this game. If Gabriel Magalhaes stays on there, then maybe Liverpool don't score. I'm not going to take any credit away from Liverpool because I think Arnie Schlott has done an unbelievable job. An unbelievable job, genuinely. 11 wins out of your first 13 games as Gaffar is he's, he's, he's ridiculous. Um, he's won both in the Champions League, in the League Cup. Like I, I don't think you can you can really talk about Arnie Schlott and not give him immense, immense praise. I, re- I really, honestly, I, th- I think he is a he's one hell of a manager. You know, it, it, we've seen it in games before where Liverpool have have looked in like a basketball match. He is obsessed with controlling the game, and I think he come away with nearly sixty percent possession at the Emirates, which is which is insane. They brought on Kivior for Gabriel Magalhaes. Um, and then Slot made his changes around the hour mark. He brought on Sobers Light, he brought on Simakas, obviously from an attacking outlet, and he brought on Cody Gakpo. And then um Arsenal took off Timbar, another injury, doesn't look good. He sat down twice on the pitch. They brought on uh Miles Lewis Skelly, which I thought was a a bold move from Arteta, but clearly he's higher up the pecking order. Then Zinchenko, and then Liverpool equalise, and the pass from Trent, the pass from Trent. Oh my word! The pass from Trent is absolutely, it is a phenomenal ball in behind. Darwin Nunez gets on the end of it, squares it across to Mohamed Salah, who always deliver ball at the Liverpools. Always delivers for Liverpool and makes it 2-2 Desmond. And I thought when he got the second goal, I thought Liverpool may go and nick it. But fair play, Arsenal dug in there. They, they got a draw. Um, Wanieri come on for Martin Lilly. Jesus come on for Saka. Arsenal had the ball in the back of the net at the end. But um, there was a foul in the build-up beforehand. And if you're a Manchester City fan, you will be over the moon about tonight's result. Now, the question is, who is the point more important for Liverpool away at the Emirates or Arsenal at home with injuries? Now, I think on a balance of play, no Saliba, Gabriel Magalhaes goes off on the hour mark, Timber gets injured. I think Arsenal will probably be more happy with a draw. Like if I said, you're coming up against Liverpool, yeah, but you're without Odegaard, you're without Saliba, you know. I think they would have taken that. From a Liverpool perspective, I think they'd be unhappy of a draw, knowing the fact that you are going in the lines then, the line is wounded. Um, But we have got a hell of a title race on our hands. This is going to go all the way, all the way. And don't write off, like, I'm not saying Chelsea are going to win the league. But they're going to be right up there as well. Um, really, really strong performance in the second half from Liverpool. Don't, when I mean strong performance, I mean in terms of controlling the game. I thought they did really, really well controlling that. Um, in terms of this Premier League game, of course, Liverpool so far, um, huge run of games coming up their way. They've got a draw away at the Emirates. They've beaten Chelsea at home. They've beaten Leipzig away. And Wednesday night, uh, they are up against Brighton. And the next league game, they play Brighton as well. It's funny how that happens. Um, these are their fixtures they've got coming up. I'm going to be honest. I think they beat Brighton home and away in, in the cup and um, in the league. I think they beat Leverkusen. I think they beat Villa. I think they beat Southampton. And the way Madrid played last night, Barcelona absolutely turning up and destroying them. Destroying them. I don't see where Liverpool are going to drop points. I really, really don't. Maybe Madrid they lose. But the way they're playing, they're, the only defeat they've had is one hiccup against Forest. Look at their results. Look at it. They have won. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight. Eight of the last nine games. And I don't see the where they're going to drop points in this run of games. As for Arsenal, you know, they'd probably come out of it today, not over the moon, but somewhat, somewhat to a degree, I guess you could say they're, they're sort of content, I guess you could say. These run of games, Newcastle away next Saturday, early kickoff, Preston in the cup. And then it's three huge games. Newcastle away, which at the moment, I think Arsenal go there and I think they come away with the three points. Inter Milan away is going to be the ultimate test for them. The ultimate test. Huge, huge test. And then Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And they've got, I think they've got six games, yeah, six games in November. And then in December is ridiculous. Man United, Fulham away, Monaco, Everton. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, oh, they've only got six. I thought they had more. But one end of a look at these games. Sporting away as well. Victor Jokides on absolute flames right now in, in Liga Portugal. He is one end of a player. Um, but if you are a if you are a, a Liverpool fan, I guess you would like, I don't know. Do, do are you happy with a draw? Um who who's more happier with the point, you know. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought both Arsenal and and Liverpool today really put on a performance to kind of show what the level of the Premier League is like at the moment. Um, really good performance, really good game um, from a neutral perspective, and of course Chelsea earlier today winning. They look, they look one and leather side as well. Match reaction for that will be at later. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you drop a like on the video if you haven't already. I will see you next time. I'm out.